John, Pastor John here, bringing to you today spiritual warfare lesson number seven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us your word. I thank you, Father, that we are growing because of the word of the Lord, because of prayer, because of fasting, because of corporate worship and praise and interaction with the people of God. I thank you, Father, that the word of God, you so perfectly designed it to help each and every one of us to grow in grace and in wisdom by the knowledge of the word of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, free our minds today to receive from you. And I say all of this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, lesson number six, we ended, we were talking about um, out of Acts chapter 26 to open their eyes and to turn them uh, from darkness to light. This is the Apostle Paul giving his testimony. Also out of Isaiah, uh, the, the prophet Isaiah talked about to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and then that sit in darkness out of the prison's house. Uh, and then we finally got to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost because the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Let's pick up in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, and it says this in verse number 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That first line of verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Okay? So before you came to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, light began to penetrate. You uh, may not understand uh, everything that you were, it's, it's like uh, uh, walking out of a dark room and um, coming into the bright sunshine. In the beginning uh, of that transition, it hurts your eyes. Uh, some would even say on some level it's blinding. Uh, that blinding light, uh, a vehicle driving up in the middle of the night is dark and only the headlights are right in your eyes. You, it blinds you to any and everything. You can't see anything except for those lights. Um, that's what happens when coming out of darkness into light. Uh, in the beginning, it, it's like, man, I, all, it's just a blinding light. I can't see anything else. But then as we become accustomed to the light, we begin to see things that we've never seen before. This is called revelation. We begin to see things because of the light that we've never seen before. Understanding begins to flood our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. Knowledge, wisdom, you name it. Uh, all of a sudden, we're, we're understanding things, seeing things, perceiving things that we never have before. Why? Because darkness doesn't allow you. Darkness can't allow you to see these things and understand these things. It takes light. And in the beginning, that light is very blinding, but... That light, as we grow accustomed to it, it brings us to a place of power. It brings us to a place of authority. Knowledge is power. It brings us to a place of great understanding and great power and authority with God. And we literally begin to live life the way God intended us to live life. And uh, we wouldn't, I don't know how anybody turns back because once you've lived in the light, how could you ever go back to groping around in the darkness? And uh, so first and foremost, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We're, we're starting to see things now about spiritual warfare as a church family that we haven't seen up to this point. We're starting to understand some things about warfare that we didn't understand before. Uh, and not just because of things that we're reading and we're learning and we're understanding. It's because of the actual engaging in the fight. It's actually getting out there and engaging in warfare, and it's giving us an education. We're starting to understand things, and we thank God for that. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 30 says, And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. And their eyes were opened. Okay? Everybody say that. Their eyes were opened. So important. 
can't be out there hammering away at people and, and saying the right things and declaring the right things, but their eyes are not opened. Before we get to them, let us pray that their eyes are open. So God, when I do engage with them, when I do talk to them, when I do share my testimony with them and I witness to them, they will receive what I have to say because their eyes have already been opened. Come on now. In Jesus' name. Uh, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 33 says, They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Okay, this is talking about physically blind people that are telling the Lord, we want, he said, what do you have need of? What is your request? They said that our eyes may be opened. Well, there are people in our world right now that they don't realize that that's what their cry is. But in the spirit, we can hear that cry. We can hear them saying, we want to see, we want our eyes to be open. Well, it's going to take a supernatural thing to take place for their eyes to be open. That supernatural occurrence is you and I as God's people partnering together with this Holy Ghost inside of us and causing that supernatural light to come on to open up their eyes to see in Jesus' name. And of course, you've got other scriptures there that you can use as a reference. Here's a commentary on this. The result of eyes being open was an immediate and decisive change or a conversion. Uh, what prevented such decisive action before? Spiritual blindness. The same spirit that brought spiritual sight was the same one that brought conviction of sin and caused a desire for change. This change is by definition repentance. Repentance. You know, we can't get anywhere with God without repentance. Okay? It is, it is step number one on our part that, uh, I mean, believing is, is, is key. Let me back up just a little bit. Believing, of course, is key, right? Because without believing that, that God is, then we get nowhere with him. So we have to first believe. Then, after we believe that there is a God and, and, and we acknowledge that, then we have to take a step of action. And that step of action has got to be repentance. Repentance is me saying, God, I've messed up. I was born in sin. I was shaped in iniquity. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and so I am admitting right now that I am a sinner. I can't get, okay. That I am a sinner. I couldn't get my iPad to work with me. And, uh, and, and, and so I am going to turn. Right now I'm going to turn. And I'm no longer going to walk the way that I was walking. I'm not going to think the way that I was thinking. So help me, God. I am going to change my direction. I'm changing my heart. My mind is changing. And, I, and in essence, I'm going to change my direction of life in Jesus' name. To turn according to vines, uh, it's uh, epistropho, to make to turn towards ye turn. Uh, the aorist tense indicating an immediate and decisive change. An immediate and decisive change. Consequent upon a deliberate choice. Conversion is a voluntary act in response to the presentation of truth. Okay? So once that truth is out there, once that truth is <clears throat> made known to us, it, that truth calls for an immediate response and a change. Uh, to turn according to the complete word study dictionary, to turn upon or toward, to turn upon or convert unto in the sense of to turn back again or upon, to cause to return from error, to turn oneself upon or toward, to turn back or unto. The word commonly translated convert and conversion in the New Testament occurs as follows. The question that arises is whether man turns to God or God turns man to himself, but it is impossible to deny the action of God in the process or the connection between conversion and salvation. The relationship of the action of God and of man in conversion is not a case of either or. Regeneration is wholly an act of God whereby the principle of spiritual life is imparted to man bringing himself, uh, or, or, yeah, himself under the dominion of righteousness. It's me choosing to leave unrighteousness and begin to follow righteousness. It's me choosing on a daily basis to leave the ungodly and begin to pursue the godly. Conversion is the human response of faith and repentance issuing forth from this new 
condition. Thus, conversion is both an act of God and man. God and man. Man cooperates because he has been made willing and able by divine grace. That's the only way it's possible. Without God's grace, we can't do any of this. None of it can be done. It's only by his grace. Exhorting the sinner, the preacher will say, turn to God. Looking back on the act, the sinner will say, God turned me to himself. Okay? Conversion and repentance are mentioned together twice. Acts 3.19, also Acts 26.20. Repentance comes first in both cases. Repentance precedes conversion. Repentance precedes conversion. You got too many people that are trying to live a converted life without true repentance. And then you got those saying that they have repented, but there's been no conversion. Luke 22, 32 says, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So you've repented, and you are walking in a new direction. But when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. So if you have not truly converted in your thought processes, truly converted your mind, your soul, your spirit, your actions, everything, if that has not happened, then how are you going to strengthen somebody? How are you going to help somebody? So that true conversion has to happen. Uh, so if there's anything in you that lacks, if there's anything in your thought process that lacks, that you have not converted, truly converted to the things of God and the ways of God, then you're not, you should not be engaged in this fight. You have to completely and truly convert in your mind and your spirit. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted. So repentance precedes conversion, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. James 5.19 and 20, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Okay, there's so much power in conversion. So much power. Uh, to truly become a convert is where you become a zealot for a thing. You become sold out. You don't just, you're not just a part of it. You're telling everybody about it. You are literally all in. First Peter chapter 2, verse 25, For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Okay? You were going that way. Now you're, you've returned. You've come back. 2 Peter 2, 21 and 22, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them, according to the true pro proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow or the pig that was washed to her wallowing, wallowing in the mire. Okay? Uh, backsliding is not an option. Turning back is not an option. It's, he said it's like a dog going back to its vomit to eat it up, or it's like a washed pig going back to rooting around and slopping around in the mess that they came out of. Not going to do it. Backsliding is not an option. And if you're not growing... You're backsliding. Hear me when I tell you that if you're not growing in God's grace, in God's mercy, in God's righteousness, in his godliness, in the right way of living, in the right way of thinking, then you, my friend, are backsliding. Repent and turn back to him and begin to pursue him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a commentary on this. The Greek word apo translated from... It, excuse me, is only contained in Acts 26, 18, one time. As you can see from the definition <coughs> included below, it speaks of moving away from or separating one's eyes or oneself from. Since it is only in the original once, we must therefore understand that the opening of the eyes of the blind will allow them to see and turn from both darkness to light 
and the authority of Satan to God's authority. It is not a turning from two different things, but from one thing expressed from two different perspectives by synonymous concepts. Turning from darkness to light is synonymous to being delivered from the authority of darkness to God's authority. From the Complete Word Study Dictionary, apo is a preposition primarily meaning from. It basically means the going forth or proceeding of one object from another. Apo indicates the separation of a person or an object from another person or an object with which it was formerly united but is now separated. Sounds like a divorce to me, and that's exactly what has to happen. We have to divorce ourselves from darkness and Satan, and we become married to the light and to God. Come on, somebody. Come on. This is a, and it's a contested divorce because the enemy is going to contest and darkness is going to contest. But I got news for you. The light is stronger than the darkness and God is definitely stronger than uh, Satan is. And so it's me and my choice. And when I start giving myself to light and start giving my thoughts to God, I start leaning in his direction. I immediately have more power to walk away from darkness and walk away from the power of Satan. As a matter of fact, it becomes powerless against me because I am now leaning towards the light and towards God. The strength is there immediately in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is lesson number seven of spiritual warfare, and, uh, and I pray that all of this is being a blessing to you, and I pray that the strength of the Lord is upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.